my son. Yeah. He finished working on assignment four, and it's pretty much going to be the entire content for this semester, okay? Uh, it might be the hardest part of uh, assignment four because it demands a little bit of thinking, but if you pay attention, I'm going to go step by step on how to finish this. And if you report it, you can watch it after. Um, uh, our test two is also happening next week, okay? Next Wednesday is the last day of class. I prepared a prep test where you guys will be able, it's very similar to the test itself, but if you're able to do the prep test, you should be good for the test, okay? So I'm going to do it very uh, similar so you know uh, what you're expecting there. It's not going to be the same, of course. Now, because we're not going to have time to do it, the prep test in class together, what I'm doing is I'm recording a video of me solving the practice test on the computer and I'm going to share the video with you guys. So you try to do it, if you cannot do it for some reason, you watch the video and there will be step by step on how to do it. If you still have any questions, I have office hours today, I have office hours tomorrow and I'm going to be making available uh, an extra office hours on Friday. So from Friday 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm going to be on my office that you can drop by and ask questions for either assignment 4 or either the midterm, okay? Now, I gave the other class until the 15th to uh, hand it in their time. It's because we lost uh, uh, some classes there because of the holiday and I had to miss a class. So uh, they are a little bit behind. But because I gave until the 15th to them, I'm also going to give until the 15th to you to hand it in assignment 4. Now, my suggestion is, if you can finish before Wednesday, it would be great. Why? Because you're already studying for the uh, test period, okay? Pretty much what we're doing here, it's going to be similar to what we do there. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay. So what we did last week was this. Uh, how do we call this? These gray lines. Oh, grid? It's the grid, right? We, we learned how to create the grid based on the instructions there, as well as we developed two lines inside of the grid. They work. What are these two uh, lines here representing? Existing and proposed. Existing ground and proposed ground, right? So pretty much we use the contours to get the existing ground over here. And we use the instructions that are provided on Blackboard. This one, where is it? Seven, four. This one over here, we use the instructions to get the uh, FG data for the finished ground, okay? Uh, ground level code, what is that? It's because you're using IE. Huh? It's because you're using Internet Explorer. I need to open with uh, yeah, Adobe. Uh, it saves on top of it. Guys, remember that I asked you to print a table? We're going to be using that today. Now, this table over here is pretty much doing by the manual method where you would take all the values, you would put all down on paper, and then you would take that paper and try it again in AutoCAD. I am going to demonstrate to you how do you do that, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to use AutoCAD in our own advantage to do this work quicker, okay? So, uh, if I can open it. It's on desktop. Open with. It's all right. Here it goes. Thank you so much for the presentation. <laughs> so uh, here we have the pro the proposed ground uh, data profile, and it's pretty much what we did to draw the um, the finished ground. Okay. Now we need to start understanding how are we gonna draw the pipe. So I want you to pay attention to one thing. We drew the pipes over here, and we drew the man. Right? We need to place these manholes and these pipes into this grid over here. Now to do that, we need to know what is the depth, for example, of this manhole. Where does the pipe start and where does the pipe finish? So for example, if I'm drawing the manhole over here, and it will look like something like this, I need to understand what is this elevation over here, what is this elevation over here, so I can actually start drawing this. You guys agree with me? So we're going to be, be, be doing that today. Now, the most important thing here is to understand that this is the subdivision that we are designing, and this is the new portion. Everything is connecting to an existing sewer. Do you guys agree with me that when everything matches here, boom, 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 and it goes here, the pipe coming here to here needs to get into this manhole over here? Now, this one over here is existing. It already has its elevations. It already has 
uh, uh, the place where the pipe should arrive. So pretty much our design needs to start backwards from here, and everything else we can change based on this. But we cannot simply determine some stuff here, and then when it gets here, the, the water or the sewer cannot reach the existing pipe. Does that make sense? Yeah? Everyone understood what I'm talking about? Because of that, on the instruction I have provided to you, not this one, this one over here. The instruction I have provided to you, the first invert, okay? So do you see here manhole data? And do you see here DS invert? What do you think DS stands for? Anyone? Hmm? What do you think US stands for? It's not the United States. Yeah. Us. Not the movie yet. So this means downstream, this means upstream. Okay? So we have a manhole over here. Pay attention here. We have this manhole over here. And we have another pipe coming in here. Okay? This pipe over here, or the elevation of this pipe over here, we're gonna call it up. Straight. The elevation of this pipe over here is down the stream. So pretty much the pipe going out is going to be my downstream. The pipe going up is going to be my upstream. Does that make sense? Now, the elevation that I'm giving you for the upstream refers to the center of the man. So the pipe itself does not go here. It stops here. But the elevation of the upstream is this elevation over here. The elevation of the downstream is this elevation over here. So if I was able to extend my pipe in the same slope that it's coming, this would be my downstream, this would be my upstream. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. The difference in elevation usually between my upstream and my downstream, it's gonna be what we call drop. So there's many reasons why there is a drop here. First of all, we don't want, if this gets clogged, we don't want the water to go up here, so we leave a gap in there so the water doesn't go. That's one of the reasons. The other reasons is for the velocity of the water. If we need to reduce the speed of it, we can actually use the drop for that. You will learn on a course called MPT or MPE, depending if you are two years or three years, the course changes the name. When do we use each type of drop? So for example, if my pipe is coming this way, I have a manhole here and my pipe is going this way, there is a standard drop for a 90 degree connection like this. If my pipe is going this way, and I have a manhole here and my pipe is going this way, I have another standard drop here. You will learn why of that and when to follow those standards in that course. In here, I provided to you every drop that you needed. Do you see this, uh, this balloon here? So for example, manhole one, we're looking to the green one because it's a uh, uh, storm. We are looking at a drop here of 0 0.15, 0 0.15. So it means that the pipe coming in here, which one is gonna be my down? So this is manhole, this is manhole one. I have three pipes over here, do you guys agree? Which one is gonna be my downstream? No. This one over here, right? So these two pipes needs to be at least 0.15 above the downstream elevation over here. Is that clear or no? Yeah? Okay, we're gonna do it together, so if it's not clear yet, it's gonna be clear soon. Another important information that I need to provide to you is the diameter of the manhole that we are using is 1.2 meters, okay? So we are gonna be designing uh, manholes on the profile that are 1.2 meter wide. So if I have the center line of the manhole, how much do I need to offset each side to have the other edge? 0.6, right? Another information that you need is this. After the downstream, this is the lowest elevation that I have. From the downstream until the bottom of the manhole, I'm gonna have what I have, what I have of 0 0.3 meters, okay? So the bottom of the manhole until the downstream over here is 0.3 meters. Pay attention, this 0.3 refers to center to here. If I do measure this distance over here, it's not going to be point three. It will depend on the um, slope of the pipe. Is that clear or no? So what we need to do now is to determine what is the downstream elevation of the first manhole, and from there we're going to work with distance of the pipe, the length of the pipe, plus the slope that you have to find every other information for every manhole in this assignment. 
once you find all the information, we can start drawing the profile that we just created. Is that clear or not? Yeah? Who here is a bit lost? It's okay, so we're gonna be start, we're gonna be doing on the computer. Once we do all this spreadsheet, if you're still confused, I'm gonna go back and explain everything again. Sounds good? Do you have a question? Yeah, I'm saying that um, once we find all the downstream, and we're gonna put it on the drawing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much once we have the information for every manhole, we can start drawing. Because imagine here, guys, imagine that I have another manhole over here, okay? And I found out that the upstream for this manhole is here, and the downstream for this manhole is here. What's gonna happen? This pipe over here, which is downstream for this one, it's gonna be what for this one? My upstream, right? So I will connect this pipe to this point. And again, it's very bad drawing here, I don't want to take pictures of it. But then it'll go back and go out from here. So if we find these two elevations for every manhole, we pretty much can do the entire drawing uh, uh, out of these elevations. Does that make sense? To do that, I have posted on Blackboard an Excel spreadsheet. Did you, did you see that? I want everyone to download the Excel spreadsheet and uh, we're going to use that right now. So if you go here, check it out. Assignment uh, for this one over here. Open on a new tab. Open. Guys, everyone will have a different number in here because the slopes of the pipe are based on their student number. So make sure that you don't copy completely what I'm gonna do here and you use your own numbers, okay? So on this spreadsheet over here, we have a few important information. I'm gonna put my name over here and you guys can do that simultaneously if you want to. And I'm gonna put my student number over here. I'm gonna create a fake one. Okay, and this is the information here. What is the S again? Downstream. US? Upstream. 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 Okay, cool. So we're pretty much going to start from here. Look what we have here. We have storm and we have sanitary. First we're going to do storm. Once we finish storm, we go back to the sanitary. The process is the same. It's just a repetition. Okay? So I'm going to start with my manhole one here. And I need to see which one is pipe three. This is pretty confusing. So I have manhole one here. I have manhole four here, okay, manhole one here, manhole four here, manhole four here, where's my manhole four? Manhole one, manhole four here. Now which one is my pipe three? For you not to get lost, I put it a diagram in here that explains to you which one is which pipe that I'm talking about, okay? So this is manhole one. When I'm talking about pipe three, is the pipe that goes between manhole one and manhole four. Is that clear? So if you need to look for which pipe I'm talking about, you're gonna go to diagram. Cool? Now check it out. Manhole one, down, downstream. Do you agree with me that the downstream elevation, it's gonna be the elevation of the pipe coming out here and connecting there, yeah? Now this downstream elevation was determined by, this is the elevation that the pipe needs to exit here, the upstream of this pipe, plus the length, plus this percentage over here, it's gonna reach here in any specific elevation. That's the downstream. And this is the elevation provided to you. So if I go here on my instruction, check it out. I go here on my instruction, you see here downstream invert, 310.80, this is for my main one. So look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take here, I'm gonna go my first ratchet, 310.80. That's my downstream elevation for main one. Do you understand where I got this number from? Yeah, provided on the instructions, my downstream elevation, and it needs to be this one because this pipe is gonna connect to the existing manhole, so we cannot change this elevation. Sounds good? Now my upstream elevation, it's gonna be what? Plus, plus the drop. Right. No, there's no slope. I have, I have my manhole here. Here is low pipe, I'm in over here, I have the pipe coming out. I need to find my upstream. What is the distance from my downstream to my upstream minimum? Drop. It's the drop, right? Now, how do I know what's the drop for my whole one? It's in the The instructions. So if I go here, I'll scroll down, the drop for my whole one on the storm is what? 0.15, do you see this? 
So the minimum upstream elevation that I can have here is 310.95. Do you agree with me? Yeah? So if you guys are populating this table over here, you are going to say 310.80. Here you are going to say 310.95. Here you're going to say 310.95. Does that make sense? And this is going to be the same for everyone. Why? It's the downstream plus the draw. I'm going to have my upstream and my upstream. Make sense or no? Yeah? Offset. What is offset over here? Offset is pretty much the distance that the manhole is from the center line. So do you see here on the Excel spreadsheet that I have center line distance? Look what I need to do. I need to draw a line from my manhole one perpendicular to my center line. The distance between here and here, 2.36, is the center line distance from my manhole. So in here, I'm going to put 2.36 which is the same if you're filling this table over here, the offset, okay? How do I, how do I find the station of manhole one? Hmm? So uh, here is station 220, here is station 240. Do you agree with me that it's in between this? How do I find the exact station? Exactly. So look how I would do. I would do a line over here, wait not this line, from here perpendicular to here. It's always perpendicular, okay? And I would break this line at this point over here. Now, if it starts from zero here, so I'm going to train this so it starts from zero, and I lease this line over here, it's going to give me the exact station of mental one. So if you want to put the table out, my mental one, and this might be different for you, it's at station 0 0.229.467 or 469 or 470. Sounds good? Now, guys, do you really need to fill this table over here? It's up to you. I'm going to be teaching you a way that you can get all these distances over here without putting on paper. The idea of this is this. You first do all everything on paper. Once you have everything ready, you go and you place it on the drawing. What I'm going to do with you differently is I'm only going to use the Excel spreadsheet and we're going to use UCF, UCSE to bring the data from the manhole so we know exactly what station it is. Okay? So this is manhole 1 over here. Now we have what we call pipe 3. Do you guys remember where pipe 3 is? Pipe 3 is the pipe between manhole 1 and manhole 4. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. This is my pipe 3. Do you agree? Manhole 1, manhole 4. The distance of pipe 3 is how much, for my case? 65. So I'm going to go here. Let me see if I can do this so I don't have to keep changing the screens. OK. So my pipe 2 over here has a length of 65 meters. Your ones might be different. You put whatever number you wrote here. Remember that it did for a Huh? You have it on pipe 2. This is pipe 2, sorry. I'm saying pipe 3. Uh, yeah, it's pipe 3. You're right. So in here, the digit is 5, 3, in here. So here is 65, right? What is the slope of my 5, 3? Well, in my case, it's 1 point E at. I'm going to pretend that it's 1.17 for me, but you're going to put the number that you wrote based on your student number. Pay attention here. This Excel spreadsheet was created with one uh, without any decimal places. So I'm going to write here 1.17. When I hit enter, it's going to go back to 1. But Excel is actually calculating with 1.17. So don't get worried when you change the number here, you're going to say, well, it's not changing. If you click on that cell, you're going to see that the cell has more. It's just because if I increase the number of uh, decimal places, it will show the right number. Does that make sense or no? Yeah. So don't worry about this, but make sure that you type the right information here, OK? Type decimal places. The diameter of this pipe is how much? 450. So I'm going to type here 450. So look what the spreadsheet did for me. The upstream elevation of manhole 1, it's when my pipe 3 is coming out. Do you guys agree? Or arriving at, at, at manhole 1. So the elevation from here, it got here as the out elevation of manhole 1. Now what the Excel spreadsheet did for me is, I have 65 meters, I have 1.17% slope. How much is the, that going to change in elevation? So my pipe left manhole 1 with elevation of 310.95, but it arrived on manhole 4 with the elevation of 311.71. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So I'm just using length and the slope 
to find how much I changed on my y-axis. Clear or not? Yeah? You understand this? Okay, so now I'm gonna go to manhole four. Look, automatically it took the elevation of the pipe here when it arrived and put it here, okay? Now, the difference between downstream and upstream is gonna be what? Drop. It's the drop, right? So what is the drop of manhole four? I go here, the drop of manhole four is 0 0.05. So if I put the drop here, 0 0.05, it will automatically fix the upstream elevation for me, okay? So differently than the first one where we had to add on our own, here we just put the drop and it automatically adds to the downstream elevation. Now, what is the center line distance from manhole four? I'm not gonna measure because, well, I'm gonna measure, but you should know this distance already. 1.5, remember that we offset this line 1.5 each way from the center line. So I know that this one over here is 1.5. Now I'm going to go to pipe 2. Where is pipe 2? If I go here, pipe 2 is the pipe between manhole 4 and manhole 5. So between manhole 4 and manhole 5, it's my pipe 2. In my case, it's the same information as the other pipe. So 65 here, 1.17 here, and the diameter 450. The upstream elevation on the manhole 4 is going to be the outer elevation of my pipe. Based on this distance, and this is slope over here, my pipe is gonna arrive in the next manhole, manhole five, at this elevation over here. And the Excel spreadsheet already populated the downstream elevation over here. What is gonna be the difference between the downstream and upstream? The drop. Now I go here in the instructions, the drop for manhole five is 0.15. So what I'm gonna do is 0 0.15 here. The center line distance, this one is gonna be different, so I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna draw a line from center of this manhole perpendicular to this point over here. And I'm gonna use distance from here to here. This is 3.22, so I'm gonna write here 3.22 at the distance in there. Now the upstream elevation of my manhole five, it's gonna be the out elevation of my pipe one. Where is my pipe one? Is the pipe between manhole five and manhole six in here. So I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna put in here this, okay? Uh, and then the length of that pipe is 89.03. The slope is gonna be 1.8. I'm gonna pretend it's 1.22. You're gonna see your slope on uh, uh, this little number. Again, it shows only one, but if you click, you can see the two decimal places. What it did is the out elevation from this manhole, this distance over here of the pipe, on this slope is gonna change the elevation from this to this. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now, this is the elevation that my pipe is gonna arrive on my manhole six. My manhole six is the last one, so I don't have an upstream value here, it's just a downstream. Everything that falls in here is gonna go down. Now, the distance between here, perpendicular to the center line, is gonna be 1.5. So what I did, I completed the entire system from here until this point over here. Is that clear? Now, here, so the water that falls here, we are doing storm, right? So the rain falls here, gets into the catch basin, comes into the system over here, and then it starts draining this way, boom, boom. When it reaches here, it's gonna go here. Why? Because at that manhole there, I have this situation over here. I have this pipe coming here, I have this pipe coming here, and I'm gonna have a lower pipe going down here. This is the pipe going to the existing um, the existing system, and these are the pipes arriving. So the water falls here, it will not gonna go up there, it will go in the lower one, right? So what's happening here is we drain the water into here, it's going there. Now we need to do the portion that we drain the water from here to go there. Does that make sense? So let's do that. To do that is the lower thing here. So manhole one is here. It already took the out elevation of manhole one as well, the upstream because both pipes, we want to arrive at 0.15 up of that point, which is the drop for that uh, manhole. Now, this pipe over here, again, if I don't know that this one's pipe five, I can go here and look, where is pipe five? Oh, okay, pipe five is here. So I'm gonna get the information of this pipe over here. So I'm gonna go here. The diameter of that pipe is what it is, 450, right? The distance of that pipe, 10.53 on my case. 1.AB, uh, 4, 5, 
the test needs. And I had uh, this information over here. My pipe leaves manhole five, manhole one, with this elevation. It arrives at manhole two with this elevation. On manhole two, what is going to be the difference between downstream and upstream? Drop. The drop. What is the drop? I go here, 0 0.05. So I add here 0 0.05. It automatically adds here. What is the center line distance? I don't know. Let me see my here from here. Perpendicular to here. Di enter from here to here, 1.67. I'm going to put here 1.67. And then I'm going to go to pipe 4. Pipe 4 is this big pipe over here. The length, 80.01. The slope, 1.47. Uh, uh, and the diameter of it is 450. Are you okay? Did you break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 450 over here. And this is the elevation where it arrives at manhole 3 in here, which is going to be from here, perpendicular to here, distance from here to there, 2.7. So Sounds good. Do you understand? Now we have the complete data information that we need to start drawing the storm uh, to where we're here. Okay? Everything that we have, all the inverse, upstream, downstream, we're going to get from this table and we're going to put it here. Okay? So we, you pretty much did an entire design of a drainage system uh, using the drops and everything. You are going to learn how to do this manually uh, on MPT and MPT. Very cool. What I wanted to focus here is understanding the concept of upstream and downstream. Downstream the pipe going out, upstream the pipe coming in into a manhole. And I want you to understand these locations over here. When I give you the downstream elevation, I'm talking about the elevation on the center line of the manhole if the pipe was able to touch there. When I'm talking about the upstream elevation, I'm talking on the center of the manhole, that elevation in there, as if the pipe was to touch there. I'm not too worried if you know how to calculate it yet, you're going to have an entire course for this, but I want you to be able to get this data that is completed here together now and put it in our cat. That's what I'm interested in, okay? On the test, you might not need to calculate all of this. I might give you this information ready and I want you to grab this information and draw it for me. So that's what we're going to do it right now, okay? Any questions so far? We're good? Okay, so how do I use this information over here to start drawing? Well, I'm, I'm going to do the sanitary after, okay? I'm going to leave this here. Now that I have this information over here for every manhole and every pipe, it doesn't really matter where I start drawing this. I can start drawing anywhere because I have all the information needed. So I want to start based on manhole 6, okay? I want to go this way over here because it's going to match with my 20, my 40 that we drew it before, okay? So what I'm going to do here, UCS enter, E enter, I'm going to change the coordinates of this point, plan, enter, enter, I fix in there, I'm going to do a construction line here on the 20, I'm going to do a construction line here on 40, I'm going to draw a straight line in here, so I can print this and do that, so now I can select everything, align, I want to align my 20, And then the other one is what? 40? Yeah. And then 40 with 40. I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of doing this already, um, all this rotation, but that's what I need to do. Okay? Now, if you use this spreadsheet, if you use the table that I provided to you in here, you would have the station of the manhole 1 already, or manhole 6, and you would just offset by that distance. But because we aligned it with here, what I can do is simply XL from the center of the manhole there, this is exactly the location of the center of that manhole. Does that make sense? So I don't need to calculate anything. This is the location of where the manhole is. Now, I'm talking about manhole six. The downstream elevation is 312.329. Uh -huh. Again, remember this. This is manhole six, let's say. We don't have an upstream. The downstream elevation is this elevation over here where from that elevation I'm going to go 0.3 down to have the bottom of the manhole and I'm going to go 0 0.6, 0 0.6 so I can draw my manhole. Is that clear or not? Yeah? So look what I'm going to do. 
this line over here, what is this line over here? 300. How much do I need offset it by so I get to this elevation? Uh, you're, you're choosing manual 3. Uh, yeah. And I'm wrong on that. Manual 6. Yeah. Thank you. So I offset this by how much? 13.757 here to there. At this exact location, it's where my pipe is going to start heading out. This is my downstream. Now, to make sure that I have information here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to type point, and I'm going to put a point here. This is a little point there. This is my point. Okay. Now, to change the size of this point, I can go PD size, and I can change the size to 1. It will be fixed on this size. If your point by any chance shows like this, your point is there but it's not showing, it's because of the point display mode. You can change how you display your point. So if you do PD mode, I would suggest you change it to 3, which is the X. If you do TD mode and you change to 2, it's going to get across like this. PD mode, it's changed to 1. I don't know what it is. 4. <coughs> There's no 4, I think. PD mode. So I suggest you change it to three, you're gonna see a point like this. Okay? So what is this information over here? What is this elevation that we just put here? It's the elevation of the downstream on manhole six. How much do I have from here until the bottom of my manhole? Point three. Zero point three. Zero point three. Offset point three from here to here. How much do I have on each side? Point 0.6, so I'm going to do point 0.6, point 0.6. I'm going to delete this line over here, fill it with radius 0, this one with this one, fill it radius 0, this one with this one. My manhole itself should only go until my, ex my new ground, my FG, enter, and then I can trim everything else. Does that make sense? Yeah? You understand what I just did here? Clear? What layer are you going to be drawing this, guys? C, in my case, C storm profile, okay? C storm profile because we're doing the storm, the storm sewer, okay? So I'm gonna make that my default layer so everything that I draw goes there. Now that I've drawn this manhole over here, for me to draw the pipe, I need to have my next manhole. You guys agree with me? Because I need to connect this line with the next one. So my next manhole, it's going to be manhole 5, and the US and downstream elevations are here. Now, where is my manhole 5? It's here. My manhole 5 falls exactly into the curve. So, can I do this? XL here, and that's going to be where my manhole 5 is. No, right? Because it doesn't reflect the curve. So, what do I need to do here, guys? Break yeah, it. I need to modify. I need to break at this point over here. This is the distance from zero until there. I'm gonna list this. The length, the length is 101.4077 on my case. So I'm gonna offset th by that distance there, my zero line in here. And I know that this location over here is where my manhole, um, my manhole five is. Make sense? I'm gonna draw a line here. So and then so here it is. What is the downstream elevation for my manhole five? Twelve point uh, three twelve point five two one. Right? So I'm gonna offset twelve point five two one this one over here. And then what is the upstream elevation? Twelve point six seven one. I'm just copying the information here guys from here to there and I'm gonna put point one point here, one point there. This is my downstream, this is my upstream. From which line I'm gonna offset my point three? The bottom one, the downstream, right? So offset point three from here to here. I can delete these lines, then I'm gonna do offset point six from here to here, okay? And then I'm gonna say fill it, fill this to this, fill it to this, to this, trim out of my finished ground proposed line, and I can trim that. So this is my manhole too. 
Make sense? Now, this is my downstream. If I do a line here, to, to grab the center of a point, I need to have what I call an AutoCAD, the node. OK, so node here needs to be on. I'm going to do line from here. You see that, sim that symbol there? It means that you're grabbing exactly the center of that point. My, my downstream here will connect to which point here? Upstream. My upstream, right? So my downstream there connects to my upstream here. Because my next pipe is going to go out of here. And this distance over here, what it is? Draw. The draw. Now, I drew this line over here. What is the thickness of this pipe? If I go here, pipe 1, what is the diameter of it? <laughs> so I'm going to offset 0.375, this line in here, and I have my pipe here. OK? Now, if I go here, I can actually trim out of this line, this, and this. And I can trim out of this line and this line, this line and there. So see, this elevation over here is different than this elevation. Because my downstream elevation, it's based as if my pipe was connected here. In reality, it's not, but we get that information in there. Is that clear or not? Yeah? On the other end over here, I would go TR enter out of this line. I want to trim this and this. TR enter here, here. I would eliminate that. Cool? Let's keep doing. I have my manhole 5. Now I need to draw my manhole 4. Now my manhole 4 is going to be located on this. Where is my manhole 4? Here. So what do I need to do now? UCS. Huh? UCS. UCS. UCS enter, E enter. Did this. Plan. Enter, enter. Rotate it there. I'm going to do a line on 120. I'm going to do a line X up on 120, and I'm going to do one in 140, OK? And I'm going to create a line here. I'm going to trim out of this line this. And what is the oh, Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> what I'm going to do now, I need to select everything, OK? It's very important. Don't leave anything behind here. So maybe here it's better to use, do you guys know the selection? If you keep pressing, uh, you don't need to draw that. So I selected everything, for sure. Then this is 120, this is 140. What is the command that I need to use? A line, a L. I'm going to take 120. And I'm going to place it at 110. And I'm going to take 140. And I'm going to place it at 140. Enter, enter. It rotated there. Where is the location of my main hole for? Here. I can simply say XL here. Do that. That's the center of my manhole 4. I go to manhole 4 information. My downstream should be 11.71. So offset 11.711. Here, this is going to be my downstream. Offset 11.761. This is going to be my down, my upstream. They're very close. I'm going to say point. point. And I'm going to add a point here. Thanks for putting the command a point there. Which one I'm going to offset down by point 3? Mm -hmm. Downstream. So offset point 3. This line over here, I can delete these two lines. I'm going to offset by point 6 to each side because the diameter of my metal is 1.2. Fill it with radius 0, this one and this one, this one and this one. And now I can connect my downstream pipe over here to which one in here? <coughs> Upstream, right? This one in here. What is the diameter of that pipe connecting? 450. Offset 0.45. I get here and here. So I can do a trim out of this line, this and this. Trim out of this line and this line. That this over here. And I'll do the same here. Once you finish this, you don't need these points, okay? These points can go away. But what we are drawing now is the manhole coming here, the pipe coming out, it arrives at this one, we have a little drop, and then the next pipe starts. And we go here, and then add a little one, and go there. Is it clear? Is it easy? It is very easy as long as you understand the concept. If you know the slope, and you know the distance, and you know that things need to match, one pipe coming here 
must reach the manhole that is here. The pipe cannot go here, the right here is a problem, right? You can do what you do the right thing. Hmm? Hmm? You can do what you do the right thing, that's for sure. I didn't understand. I'm not saying that you can do what you do the right or wrong. But for sure, because if it doesn't meet, <laughs> then it means that it did something wrong and I have to go back and fix it. Okay? Guys, uh, I've been doing this for, I don't know, the past six years maybe. So for me, it's so simple, but I know that you guys are going to have a little problem understanding and some questions here and there. So I'm here to help you, okay? Now, when we do the sewer one, it's pretty much the same thing and we're going to draw it together. My suggestion is that once you start drawing the sewer, because you're going to have a lot of lines here together, you, what do you do with this layer? You I turn off. Um, yeah, yeah. Lay off. You can turn off the layer so it doesn't bother you once you finish it. The only manhole that it's going to be a bit different, it's going to be manhole one. Why? Because there's going to be a pipe coming this way, there's going to be a pipe coming this way, and there's going to be a pipe going out that way. Is that clear or not? Let me show you how manhole one is going to look like. If I go here, you just enter, the enter, I do this, and I say plan, enter, enter. I can introduce you just over here. Check how manhole one is. There's a pipe coming here, there's a pipe coming there. Let me turn off this sewer here so you don't see it. Pipe coming in, pipe coming off, and these pipes over here are, uh, if I look here, I'm talking, this pipe is coming in, this pipe is coming in, and the pipe that I do there in the circle is this pipe coming out, okay? Now, this circle over here has the diameter of that pipe. If you check your drawing, it should be 600 millimeters. So I put here 600. Which one is my downstream here? Where is my downstream elevation in these drawings? Huh? So I need to have a downstream and an upstream. Where is my downstream here? Circle. The bottom of the circle. Good job. So my downstream, when I offset, it's going to be here. My upstream when I offset, we don't see it now because it's not there, but it's going to be this location over here. Does that make sense? Do you guys understand? So the upstream for both pipes are here. Okay? So manhole one is the junction of everything. So you're going to have water coming down here, boom, and you reach here. And then you have water coming down from there, uh, and it's reach, it reach there. And then everything that falls here is going to go that way there to the existing man. Clear or no? Yeah. yeah? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys time to work on this, get your tracks uh, ready, I'm gonna be helping you, and then we're gonna talk about labeling. I'm not gonna do the sanitary with you, it's the same thing that I just did here, but then how do we label and how do we make it look good like this? Do you see that it's a little bit different the way it looks here? It looks better? We're gonna learn how to do that. But I, I need you to try doing this because I'm sure you're gonna have questions, okay? Thanks guys. Thank you.